Hey, this is your Geek Fix. YTF Radio. Today we're going to show you how to make props from dollar store items. But first... I'm pretty excited about today's project because this is something that allows everyone to participate, really. This is something that everyone should be able to do. Uh, the thing that bothers me about a lot of other channels that are maker channels is that they tend to do a lot of things. They use instruments and, and equipment that I'd love to have, but I know not everyone does. Even some of the things we've already made are a little above some people's grade, and, and you made that clear to me through comments. So. I thought today I really want to make something that would be something everyone could do. I mean literally everyone can do and parts that are very inexpensive and uh, at the same time something cool. During our most recent project I couldn't help but think about flying saucers and there's a lot of them out there right I mean from Forbidden Planet to Lost in Space uh, Rick and Morty uh, even technically the Enterprise has some saucers to it and so as I thought about all these these cool ships it would be really cool to do something that was somewhat of an homage something that that combined all of those together and uh, they look neat best thing about flying saucers, as far as the shape goes, is that throughout filmmaking, it's been a fairly easy prop to, to make, and usually is made with some literal plates and saucers. So I decided I, I would set a goal. Well, all of our projects, you might notice, have some type of rules, something that I want to stay within, something that makes it more difficult to do. It's not just, we're not just making something, I'm doing it with some purpose in mind and, and some type of parameters. And so in this case, I wanted to make this, with the exception of some of our paints, I wanted to make this using nothing but dollar store items, specifically the Dollar Tree. So the Dollar Tree is located throughout the United States and Canada um, and the items that they tend to sell are items that you can find also very cheap online. So whether you're using eBay or Amazon or whatever, uh, you should be able to get those items. And so I even made these items available in advance so those watching could, could go out into the garage or wherever afterwards and, and, and build along and then share it back. Make sure that if you make this, you share it back with us. The key to making a flying saucer is that saucer shape. So of course, the first section that I went to at the Dollar Tree was the, the section where you get picnic items. Uh, because those are on sale right now. It's the beginning of summer. Uh, picnic items are, are an easy item to get and they were on sale two for a dollar. That means 50 cents for three or four plates. And so I was pretty excited about that. I looked for uh, multiple different types of plates and bowls and and cups, uh, anything that had kind of that saucery look to them. And my favorite were these. Uh, this is a paper plate holder. And if you've never seen these before, basically, you know that when you go on a picnic and you have paper plates, uh, you're holding the paper plate and then they just, whatever you put on there just falls off, right? And so these are meant to be able to, to give it some structure and it holds it up, plus they're easy to clean. But I love the way that these ones were shaped. I mean, you have this cool top, plus you have all these angles along the side 
and what could be like portholes or 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 areas for me to access and put things into. I just thought this is this is a great shape. This is the shape that I want uh, for majority of my ship. Because I saw this, the thing that I thought as well was that I had to have something that I do with the bottom. See how it's all open like this? I, I think that that would make a great area for, for something that propels it. And uh, so I also found these plates right here that have this reflective coating on them. And as you can see, when you move them, they have this rainbowy, uh, neat effect I, I really like. And so when you put that underneath, then we can have something that would look pretty neat on the bottom for uh, for propulsion. So, so that's neat. That was something I was pretty happy with. So, so far, a couple of parts down. I also got some clear plates, which I've already cut some of the edges off of. Um, what I like about these is that as you lay them over each other, they also help to spread some of that light. And so I, I think uh, this will be good for underneath as far as something to window that. Then, I gotta come up with the, the dome, which I thought would be something that I wouldn't find exactly what would, what would look good, but honestly, there's a lot of them. Um, they're, they're cups like these, which I think are used for putting fruit in and, and serving ice cream. Um, and I found a couple types these were probably the most round, but at the same time, they were kind of small uh, in comparison. Uh, and then I found these, which I like much better. They are, the problem with these that I don't like as much as these is that these seem to be pretty strong, probably because of their shape. They're a little bit thicker plastic, but these are also much larger and uh, they flatten out nicely at the bottoms for that aerodynamic look. Um, I don't know, I just, I think this one's better. And so that's what I'm gonna go with. So I put that on top like that and uh, it definitely has that, that flying saucer look to it. When it comes to propulsion, uh, we want something that would push it along this way. I thought of several shows from Star Trek to Rick and Morty um, where they have something on the back of these saucers that still push them along. And these lights that I found are for lighting up your lawn. And um, you pull off the stake off the bottom and you can see they have that shape that you would see literally on, like on the back of the Enterprise. Uh, I love it, it looks very cool. So I can also put that on the top and, and it should look like it's something that would push it along. Um, I also like the way that these lights work. I've used these in a lot of projects. Um, they have a clip on one end and uh, I don't so much like that part, but look at the shape of this light uh, otherwise. It, it looks like it is an engine. When you open this up, you pull off that clip and then pull off this little arm right here. You just break it right off. And suddenly I have something I thought I could use later on as some kind of handle or gear. Um, but uh, basically, then I take off these back cones and the front of the light and then it will come apart. And again, it looks like a little engine that we could use. So it also has a light in it. Uh, that's a possibility. Speaking of lights, I also have this clip-on book light, which I've used a lot as well. You might have remembered that I used these lights both for painting with the Avengers project and on our fallout gun. It has a great look to it. It has, again, the right bones. When I take off this clip, uh, what I'm left with is this tube that I can actually form into uh, the shape that I need. And it has a great shape to it. So again, I thought this is something I could really use. Um, and it was around then that I was near the front and saw these pens and liked the end of the pen. So I, I bought those, screwed off the end of the pen and found that I could put that onto my tube and they become these claw-like arms. And I pictured the flying saucers from War of the Worlds where it had those long arms that came out that uh, had these 
little grabbers on the end and, and this looked really cool and perfect. As far as the cockpit and the interior goes, they have a couple of magnet tins like this that I thought would be good for being able to seat all of my center area on. I, I looked at it and those are about the same size as these tops. And so, so I wanna create something as far as an interior that fits within this circle. And the depth's about right too. So I got some of these magnet tins just to build the interior inside of. So suddenly I'm starting to get these ideas about how I want it to go together. And now it's just a matter of putting it together. So first off with my plates, I want to make sure that there's a hole that's about this big. Now this part's really easy to cut because I only have to cut these little tiny pieces which are honestly pretty easy to cut. Ah! I've got a uh, hole that's just right for this to go into. Now, I uh, decided that I, I wanted to have several layers of these plates because I wanted to have some kind of a grill that goes all the way around. And so to get that effect, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna have a, a plate like this, followed by most of a plate, I'll cut off the edges, and, and just keep going back and forth like that, full plate, portion of the plate, and that portion will be supportive at the same time, uh, have the space at the edges that I need to look like some kind of a grill. By staggering these pieces a little bit more, I can give it this effect of like a turbine uh, that would help to push through the air and, and propel it upward. In that grill, I wanna have some headlights. So with those plates staggered, I'm gonna mark two three quarter inch areas where I can put in the lights and access the wiring. Now on all nine plates, I'm gonna cut an area in the back for wiring access. Next, I saw these at the store and I, it's something about them, their shape also. Again, this is a lot about finding things that have the right bones to them. And these hooks, uh, which are, are, I think, sticky on one side, are used for hanging plants and things like that. But, but look at the shapes around the bottoms. I can already think that this would look great on the bottom of this flying saucer. And I had the idea that uh, of course we want to make this a little bit more functionable so we also want something that we could catch cows with or, or something else um, and so so yeah I thought having a hook on the bottom would look neat first I marked and drilled three holes in the base of the hook where I want my legs to go I'll then take one of my uncut plates and trace it out and cut space for a hook so to paint it I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum uh, Metallic Turquoise, as well as this Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Metallic Finish, which is actually more of a bronze color. I also painted my legs a chrome and turquoise color to match my shift. Once the paint was dry, I could screw those legs into the pre-drilled holes. All right, now I think I'm at the point where it's ready to be put together. Everything else is, is looking pretty good. Um, look at that. It will actually, uh, it'll actually stand by itself now. And so um, that's pretty good. See if it'll actually hold more weight. And it will. Look at that. That's pretty impressive. I also took a plate that I added to both the top and the bottom plates to be able to have some silver chrome because I decided that the, the color scheme was bronze, silver, and blue. And so that means that I had to glue another plate on the inside, which is, which is okay. It actually, it definitely does give it more detail when you're looking at it from an angle. And now we're ready to work on the cockpit. Uh, this part might take a little bit longer, not because it's complex, but because it might take a little bit longer to dry. Uh, but for right now, the first thing that we need is a chair. These cars I got originally because I was looking at some kind of an interior. I, I knew I needed to fit some seats within a certain size. And uh, the truck particularly, it has two seats in it. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just, I'll just use some seats that are pre-made. But in the end, I have another idea for the seats, which I'll mention in a moment. But if I take apart the car, on the inside of that car, 
uh, we have these seats and things, but back here, what I really like is the way that this stereo system looks. I think it would make a really good console or some type of uh, dashboard. And so I decided that I would drill out these holes right here and then uh, paint this grill right here. Speaking of hooks, uh, these are self-adhesive hooks. And um, originally I thought I could put one of these hooks on the top of my flying saucer to give it some kind of a, I don't know, extra detail that looks like it's, again, aerodynamic. But um, then I started playing with them and found out if uh, you use the two pound one and you put it on the back of a three pound one, I suddenly have what looks like a chair. Um, and, and it looks very uh, modern or space aged at that point. I was worried about the bottom of it because it just didn't seem very stable. So when I was thinking about different captain's chairs, like uh, say on the Enterprise, they always have that big wide swivel base. So I modified my other hook to make it fit just like this, giving it more of that pilot's chair look. Now I wanted to have a textured padding for the chair and the interior and typically I'd use something that was made for molding and, and, and that dries well. But uh, in this case, I was limited to what they had in stock. And so I bought this Play-Doh. Well, it's not really Play-Doh. It's just plain old, just dough. Uh, <laughs> kind of reminds me of the crayons that we got at uh, Dollar Tree. And they just said crayon, no colors, no special color, nothing. This, uh, this red color is the one that I'm wanting to use. So you're looking for the red. I think that is pretty important, at least for, for the color scheme I'm thinking of and the interior I'm thinking of. I, I kind of want like a, a sewn leather look. Um, and I really like this texture that we're gonna be using. This is an organizer, a Jot organizer range tout. And uh, so this is something that I think can help me to have some of the texture that I want. I made shapes for the chairs and the walls and then I used this tout and rolled and pressed the design into my dough. This may take a couple tries, but if you take your time and you're patient, it'll look great. Now this can take up to five days to dry as well. So for that reason, we're gonna put it aside while we work on the next piece. I'm trying to think about how exactly the person would operate this vehicle. So. I think what I want to do is I want to create some gears for shifting with. I found out uh, Dollar Tree has a lot of things that they'll put into stock that they don't actually sell typically. Uh, that's a problem, but I found these gears, which are awesome. Uh, when I found out that they don't normally sell them and people had already bought them out, because uh, they were, the bag said hobby gears, which um, is not how I found them online afterwards, but I went online and I did buy a hundred more of these uh, because I like them so much. I was planning on using them for a different project, but then when I, I got into this, I thought this would be perfect um, for detailing a little bit of everything and, uh, and maybe give it a little bit of a steampunk look. I used this pink flamingo mixer for the gear shift. I will cut some of those gears in half and place them on either side of the gear shift and paint them a copper color. And then I also want to use a little bit of mind control because of course that's what aliens do, right? So I can be able to stick this right inside and, and have this little ball at the end that, that has that cool pink glowing look to it. I think I'm gonna keep it the way it is. And now I'm ready to assemble our cockpit. I made the mistake of not planning ahead for shrinkage and in the end my dough turned out to be smaller than I had planned for. Most prominently it no longer fits all the walls and there's now spaces in between them. To fix this I used some pieces of this green palm tree cocktail mixer and also used some gold pull yarn from a gift bag. I was also worried that some of these tops might be a little bit too big for connecting with the tops of the magnetons. So I bought some of uh, these Easy Seal Betty Crocker Tupperware. 
so that I can create an area for that top to be seated on. In the end, I really like the way that it's looking inside. Some things I knew I didn't need to have, but I had an idea for. These are the mini glass containers. Uh, they have mini, just mini glass containers. They're all very straightforward names. And these are pretty tiny, but I thought I could fill them up with this glitter glue and could use them for, for whatever. Maybe it's a power source of some sort or just something that they collected on other planets. They come in all sorts of different colors. I just think that'd be a pretty neat thing to, to have as a detail, but not necessary <laughs> at all. And now it's time to put in our lighting and our propulsion. We'll start by disassembling the lawn lights. Throw out everything but the reflector and the lens. We're gonna mark the bottom half at an angle to cut off the back portion. Now we're gonna put that reflector and lens back in the casing. We're gonna use these lights for our front lights, our rear lights, and a little bit of detail in the back. I used the front lens casing and reflector for the front lights and put them in our pre-cut holes in the grill. Remove this back area of two more of the lights to create our brake lights. I also added some red shot glass pieces for the color and removed the back bullet point for details I'll use later. The next thing was, I also wanted to light this thing. I wanted to, to light it up uh, throughout. This is not the first time I am showing uh, these. I buy them all the time at the Dollar Tree, uh, mostly during Christmas, but uh, they did have some right now uh, that were on sale and had stars and things like that on them. Just because they have shapes stuck on the end doesn't mean that you can't use them for this. You just pull those off. They're usually just plastic ends that go on top of the LEDs. You pop them off and you have a standard string of LEDs that are battery lit. So they come in blues, reds. We've used it for projects like uh, our Iron Man backlit screen. I like them a lot. They're a good cheap option for being able to light something when you have need multiple lights. Now these are supposed to have 10. They say 10 on them. Uh, at the same time, I have found two sets that I've opened already today that did not. They had, they had nine. And so I do need 10 because I already have this kind of planned out. We're gonna be sticking them in from the back through to the front with two in the console of the cockpit, two for the front lights, two that are gonna be in the center, which uh, will involve us just plugging them through this plate just like so, and then two in the brake light and two in the thrusters, which leaves us with this battery pack. What are we gonna do with that? Well, I figured I wanted it to be where I can access the switch, turn it on and off. I also uh, kind of like the idea of being able to access the batteries, but having the batteries show, so this way, people can see that we have multiple forms of power from, from nuclear power to, to solar power to, to standard battery power. I mean, who knows what these people could do? So I decided to take that and put it between our two thrusters. I also took our two bullet points and plugged them onto the back to give it a 1950s wing look. The only thing that I added to the dome was this thing right here. It's uh, actually part of one of those hooks when I took it apart and looks a little bit like some kind of antenna but it also for me acts as a handle for me to be able to pick it up and to be able to place it on top of my ship. And that's it from concept to complete. You'll notice I also added some additional details like uh, these pipes over here and then I put in several of the gears in different locations. Now it's your turn to make this or or make it better or make something else. Create and then share it back with us because that's part of this community is, is sharing things and being able to see what is it that you like to build. Also like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more of your Geek Fix.